good YouTube this is blue nine productions this is our first ever video on the channel and um, so I'm the Charminator I'm gonna be taking care of all the Patriot sides of all the film that we're gonna be analyzing um, so before we start I just wanted to mention a couple things um, first of all we weren't unfortunately able to get all 22 film just because for some reason game pass is glitching uh, second of all uh, I, want, I just want to give a quick thanks to Manuel Trevedi. He's a friend of ours who uh, designed the logo and the banner. Um, yeah, and uh, so as a Patriots fan, naturally, the first person I'd want to analyze is Tom Brady, you know, the GOAT. So, um, again, this is our first episode. Uh, it's obviously, you know, where we're starting off. Might not be as great as later episodes to come, but uh, any constructive criticism would be greatly appreciated. All right, so with that said, let's get right into the film. So we're gonna be analyzing Brady's four interceptions from the 2016-17 season. And, you know, honestly, to me, this was probably Brady's best season. Yes, I think it was better than 07, not just because it ended in the Super Bowl, but because Brady broke records that are actually impossibly difficult to break, such as having a 14 to one interception or touchdown interception ratio. That's absolutely unheard of, you know? So, um, let's take a look at his interceptions here. His first interception of the season came against the Seahawks. So I'm just going to show you what it looked like real quick. So you just have a look. All right. All right. So that's what it looks like, right? So, uh, let's go back and let's break it down a little bit. So right off the bat, you can see, um, so I'm, here's how I'm going to run this. I'm going to try to use blue for a pen um, for the defense, okay? So you got my little pen here. So right off the bat, you're going to see a single high safety right here, okay? So um, what's going to happen is they're running a cover, the Seahawks are running a, you know, stock cover three sort of defense. They run this quite a bit. It's one of their favorite defenses to run. So you will notice that we have Gronk, so I'm going to use yellow for the offense. You have Gronk right here, and Gronk's going to try to run a seam up the middle, right? So what that's going to do is that's basically going to suck up Earl Thomas, all right? Earl Thomas, the free safety in the middle. So you'll see him sort of deviate a little bit to this side of the field. And right now, all my YouTube notifications and emails are coming. But okay, so... What's going to happen here is we have a single high safety, and if we just run the film a little bit, let's just run the film, you will see I want you to take a look at how Richard Sherman right here, how Richard Sherman, and I believe this is Jeremy Lane, that's the Sean Shed, my bad. I want you to take a look at how their hips are positioned. They're going to do a sort of sidestep, okay? And what that means is that they're playing zone defense, right? So, just take a look at that. See that sidestep, right? So, what does that mean? That means that the way this is going to work at the beginning of the play is we're going to see Richard Sherman kind of go back into a zone right here. You're going to see Deshaun Shedd go back into a zone right here. I'm going to see Earl Thomas sort of be sucked up a little right in that zone just so he can stop Rob Gronkowski. All right. And then on the meanwhile, we're going to have, um, let's see, we're going to have a full out 4-3 uh, going on with the Seahawks. They love to run this a lot. So you're going to see all four of these guys blitz off the edge. All right. We're going to see Khalid Red. We're going to see Cliff Averill blitz off the edge here. So what's going to happen here is Cliff Averill is going to bounce it in and then bring it out and sort of sit in the middle, kind of like a spy on Brady, okay? So uh, let's just take a look at what that looks like here, okay? So I want you to keep a special eye on Cliff Averill for this play. He plays a pretty big part in uh, why this pick is, you know, why this play results in an interception. All right, you see that? 
So he gets bounced out by Martellus Bennett. He's just going to sit down in the middle. So let's talk about the routes going on here. Alright, so what's going to happen here, you can't really see this because of the camera angle, but you're going to have um, Malcolm Mitchell, the rookie who really stepped it up this year for the Patriots. He's going to run an out route, and it's, it's kind of a deepish out like that. You're going to have Edelman. You can't really see his route because of the camera angle. You're going to see him come here and do something here. I can't see it because we don't have the end zone V or the all 22. You're going to see Gronk come up and run a seam like this. So what this is going to do is it's going to suck up. I believe this is Cam Chancellor right here. Right? This is going to suck up Cam Chancellor um, and Earl Thomas towards the middle. Right? And if you have them sucked up towards the middle like that on the route, that means you have some free space open right here. All right, so he's going to suck them up. And you have Martellus Bennett who's going to run. All right, that's not Bennett, that's wrong. You know, Martellus Bennett, who's going to sort of cut at or chip at um, Cliff Averill here. And this is the reason Cliff Averill has to bounce to the inside and sort of stand a spy. And to see him run in the flat. And he's going to be wide open on this play. All right, and then Blunt's basically going to do the same thing here. For the most part, you're going to see, um, not sure who this is right here, but what you're going to see is he's going to cover the zone in the flat. That's going to leave Blunt wide open, and um, basically these two are also going to play zone, trying to cover up those cross routes. All right, so let's take a look at what happens here. Um, most of the pressure here is generated by number uh 77 who i believe is right here uh and his name is i'm gonna pronounce this incorrectly his first name is atiba rubin uh that's his name so he's the one really responsible for this pick so what's gonna happen here well we're gonna see um we're basically gonna see is malcolm mitchell is gonna run his out route right and brady's gonna be flushed out of the pocket for a second because of Atiba or Atiba Rubin. All right, so let's just check this out. So watch. He blitzes right down the middle, right? Marcus Cannon, who, as you all know, is an all pro this year, he lets him go, right? And he's going to flush Brady out of the pocket for a second. Then Brady sees number 93 come on the outside, so he's going to step back into the pocket, right? Gets his feet set and throws. And this looks like a horrible, horrible interception at first glance. I mean, it is. So let's take a look at this view. This is my favorite view here. So again, you're going to see uh, Bobby Wagner and number 55, I think that is. Um, they're just going to be sitting down here uh, playing a sort of zone, right? Um, right in the middle to stop all these crossing routes that Edelman and uh, basically all of our small fast receivers have been running on them. So you're going to see a little bit of zone here. You're going to see Chancellor here and you're gonna see this is the important part Earl Thomas gonna be sucked into that area of the field about right there All right, and then you're just gonna see Once again Martellus Bennett gonna run in the flat. All right, let's check out what happens here All right So Brady's gonna get the snap right You see pressure you see pressure you See pressure he's flushed out he comes back in all right, and now it might be difficult to see here, but if I just if I can get a good view here, this is a little bit blurry, but uh, you can see Malcolm Mitchell right here, the rookie, right over here. Malcolm Mitchell, what he does, and this is an absolutely genius part uh, play on his part, when he runs his little out route like from here, like that. Right? He sees Brady getting flushed out of the pocket. And what he knows is that Earl Thomas is going to be on the other side, the strong side, on Gronk, right? Because he need to double cover Gronk. So what he does is he comes forward, right? And I can't really draw this because of the angles. It's, it's like a comeback or an out route. You can't really tell. But he goes up, and he decides to fade up on it. So he knows he's one-on-one. -on -one. And at this point, Mitchell has his guy beat, basically. And if Brady throws this ball, this is a touchdown. Look, there's basically no Earl Thomas right here. He's got about five yards of separation with uh, Deshaun Shedd, who's the closest defender, right? 
So if Brady can throw this, this is a touchdown right here. All right, let's see what happens. Brady throws. Brady drastically underthrows it. All right, I want you to notice. Look, look how far away Earl Thomas is here, right? All Brady has to really do is just put that ball like right here, right? He doesn't have to throw like there where he throws on Deshaun Shedd because the angle, he understows that. Maybe maybe 25, 26-year-old Brady makes that throw. Brady's getting old. And this is, I see a lot of people talking about how Brady's unstoppable. He's going to be playing into his mid-40s, maybe even high-40s. That's this is where I start to see decline in Brady's play, right? You see him throw this careless interception right here. It should have been a touchdown. He drastically underthrows it. Easy pick for Deshaun Shedd. This was his first interception of the year. It was honestly, you know, disappointing. Easily avoidable, to be honest. All right. Just watch this throw. Malcolm Mitchell has him beat. You can see he has to come back in order to make the tackle. Deshaun Shedd is just standing there. This should have been a touchdown on Brady's part. All right. Um, so I want you to notice though, where, how, or rather how Brady was forced to make this throw, it's because of pressure. And that's a theme you'll see a lot with all of Brady's interceptions. There's some sort of pressure involved. It's very rare when Brady just has time and he just sits down and throws a bad throw, you know? It's always pressure that gets him, especially pressure down the middle. And you'll see that with number 77, Ruben, who just completely runs through Marcus Cannon and Shaq Mason, the guard, or rather the tackle and the guard, respectively. All right, so let's go on to the next interception in the season, and this was against the Baltimore Ravens, okay? So right off the bat, what you're going to see is the Ravens are playing a variation of cover two, so they have a safety up top, and you're going to see Eric Weddle right here, who's going to come up and play that zone right there all right so Brady sees this okay and he's gonna motion out uh, he's gonna motion in rather Julian Edelman so you see Julian Edelman come right over here all right and so what Chris Hogan and Julian Edelman are gonna do is they're gonna run a combination route so um, Chris Hogan's gonna sort of take an outside release like that and I'm assuming he wanted to either get out like here and cut out or he just wanted to bring it up, but we don't know, and you'll see why in just a second. All right, and Julian Edelman was going to take a shallow out route. Okay, so let's see how that worked out. Didn't really work out too great, as you can assume, because it was an interception, but let's take a look at the rest of the people. So we have James White here, Super Bowl hero, right? Um, what he's going to do is he's basically going to block the edge because Brady expects Eric Weddle to blitz. Once he sees the edge isn't blocked, he cuts it inside, and he settles down for the check down like that. And you have, uh, let's see, Malcolm Mitchell, right? Um, so Malcolm Mitchell, you can't really see his route too, too well. He's going to sort of come up and sit down somewhere right here. And you have Martellus Bennett right here. And Bennett's basically covered in the flat, All right? So Bennett's going to actually first cut off four and then try to take the flat and that doesn't really work out so let's check out what happens here i'll just show the interception first all right you can barely even see the ball being picked off let's check it out from this view because this view is a lot easier to see so initial thoughts disgusting right you're thinking, oh my god, that's that's a textbook definite. That, that that looks like a rookie quarterback playing. You know, that looks like Tebow right there. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just an experience, but it's not. And let me explain why. At first glance, I thought the exact same. In fact, before I decided to research this, I thought this was Brady's fault. I thought this was him crumbling under pressure like a rookie. But that's not what happens here. Okay. First of all, this is outstanding coverage by uh, the Ravens, okay? And I especially wanted to acknowledge number 26 down here, who does a wonderful job of jamming Hogan, all right? His name is uh, Gerard Powers, right? Here you see he, he jams Hogan. Hogan, in my opinion, is probably the best route runner on the Patriots, all right? In terms of pure route running, he's probably the best receiver on the Patriots. He his, he doesn't have speed, he doesn't have height, 
but he does have route running. That's how he's always so wide open. We call him 7-Eleven, open all the time, right? So I just wanted to show, keep your eye out for Rashad Powers down here. He's going to jam Hogan. That's basically what's going to stop Hogan from running whatever route it is, and that's why we can't really tell what route he was trying to run. Looks like after he gets jammed right here, he was trying to run up and settle down somewhere here or just run across in. You can't really tell though, all right? Um, another more practical idea is that he was trying to run up and cut it out. So that way he would create a high-low with Julian Edelman like that. But you can't really tell because obviously he gets jammed. It's a great job by Rashad Powers here. The Ravens basically play perfect coverage here. I personally am not a big fan of this play design, but I mean, what are you going to do? Alright, so right here you have Eric Weddle in the middle, you have uh, CJ Mosley, you have safety help, basically everywhere you need it. You have Eric Weddle right here on Hogan in case he needs to, CJ Mosley able to spy basically on Brady in case Brady wants to break it out, as Brady has been known to do at the goal line occasionally, he did it in 2001 against the Raiders. He even did in 2014 in the divisional round against the Ravens, right? They're familiar with this. John Harbaugh is very familiar with this. He's going to keep Mosley on Brady just in case Brady decides to break it out, all right? And so when you have um, James White blocking on the edge right here, right? You're going to see him notice that there's no one blitzing, and he runs in and sits down right here. And so Mosley's going to eat that route up too because, you know, he's on Brady. And so Brady doesn't have enough time to run away and try to make a play himself. He lacks that athleticism, and by that time, the pressure's already there. Okay, so what's going to happen here? Well, if you check this out, again, you have safety help up here too on Mitchell in case you need it. Um, so... So Brady basically just flushes out the ball. So why does he flush out the ball? Let's check it out. All right. So again, uh, keep an eye out on Mosley right here. He's stopping Brady from basically just waltzing his way into the end zone like that. But, all right. So let's check this out. Do you see it? Let me rewind. Let's get it right to where we need to. All right, first of all, I just wanted to mention something. Uh, you'll see this is a theme. Where does the pressure come from? Is it coming from the edge? No. It's coming from right in Brady's face. Right over here. Not the edge. All right. Pressure is mainly provided by number 93. Not sure who that is. I think it might be... Lawrence Key, who the Patriots actually picked up this offseason. Um, but, all right, so I want you to notice something right here in this frame. All right, do you see it? Right over here on Chris Hogan. So the reason Brady throws that up is because he notices that number 24, who is Sharice Wright, is actually holding Chris Hogan, and he's just going to toss it up because he believes this is going to be uh, pass interference call. He believes he's going to get another set of downs, right? And actually something very, very, very similar to the Patriots uh, Panthers game back in 2013 where Keekley held Gronkowski, or someone held Gronkowski in the end zone and Keekley picked it off at the end of the game. This is a very, very similar play to that, actually. So watch. If you just keep your eye out on the left side of the field you'll see Sharice Rice just holding Hogan and Eric Weddle picks that off. And that's the reason for that pick. I wouldn't fault Brady, to be honest, um, just because he was expecting there to be a penalty. Again, it's probably not the best idea to throw like that. Um, but honestly, Sharice Wright did get away with a penalty. Hogan was clearly trying to cut it outside at that point, as you can see. He's clearly trying to cut outside. trying to cut outside and he's clearly being held at that point so that should have been a penalty uh Sharice Wright got away with one but all's well that ends well they did end up winning that game okay let's move on to pick number three 
Pick number three was against the Texans, and this is in the playoffs, okay? So, right off the bat, let's just analyze the coverage. Uh, we got a sort of 5-2-4 kind of setup going on here. So you're going to see Texans line up five on the line. You're going to see two linebackers, and you're going to see four in the secondary. Now, what's going to happen here is... I want you to notice we have, or the Patriots rather, have James Devlin, who's a fullback lined out wide. And they love to do this to get mismatches because you're forcing a cornerback, right? You're forcing a cornerback to cover a fullback. That means you're going to have mismatches somewhere else on the field. And they're hoping to exploit that, right? And actually, if you take a look at this, theoretically, you should have a mismatch with Edelman right here. Because who's on him, right? You're going to have safety up deep like that. Because the... Uh, um, the Texans did like to play a lot of man coverage. This is actually one of the few plays where they play zone coverage. Uh, they're actually playing a sort of cover four defense here. And so you're basically going to see, um, number 25, not sure what his name is. Um, he's going to sort of sit underneath. You're going to see 43. going to come here like that. And you see AJ Boye. He's going to play a little bit. He's going to try to play the line a little bit. All right, and so the offense, let's work on the offensive routes here. So what's going to happen is LeGarrette Blunt, right, is basically going to be covered man-to-man -man by Whitney, or by uh, Brian Cushing here. This was basically the story of the game. We, they always had Brian Cushing covering man on LeGarrette Blunt. all right? So what's going to happen here is basically, um, let's roll the film real quick. You're gonna have Blunt sort of cut Whitney Merciless right here. Alright? Take him out of the game, right? Or take him out of the play. You're gonna have um, Julian Edelman who's gonna run sort of a quick out like that. And you're gonna have um, Mal uh, Michael Floyd who's a free agent pickup after the DUI, you know, pretty infamous. He's gonna run a slant. Alright? Now, this was a really, really tough game for uh, Michael Floyd because he dropped a pass. So this is actually what's gonna happen here. And AJ Boye was all over him. Okay, so let's check out how this play works. And actually, Devlin's gonna just run a little nice little hitch here. Uh, they're not they're not gonna pass to him. They're just they, he's just there to exploit any possible mismatches. Um, but so let's check out what happens here. All right, uh, all right, all right. So that, my bad. Edelman's going to actually change size just to exploit whether or not it's man coverage. And you can see he's just going to run the quick out, right? And so watch. That should be a catch. And if you're a receiver in the NFL, any any throw, any pass that hits both of your hands while your elbows are bent, that's a catch. Come on. You're in the NFL for a reason, right? you you got to be able to catch that. This is Michael Floyd's fault 100%. Now, you might be thinking, Brady Brady probably uh, threw that too far in front of him, which I guess in some cases is a valid argument. Uh, so let's take a look at the play from a different view, all right? Let's take a look at from the end zone view, because this clarifies a ton, you know? So once again, um, I just want to mention how we have uh, Bennett, all right? So I'll just let this roll real quick. Right, we're gonna have Bennett come up in the flat. We're gonna have Blunt cutting here. It's an important cut to seal the edge off on Merciless. We're gonna have Marcus Cannon there. Jadavian Clowney right here actually beats his man, Nate Solder. He's ready to just jump up because Brady's about to pass. So I want you to notice something. I want you to notice number 96, um, who is I have absolutely no idea. Um or 90, uh, what's his name, 98 rather, DJ Reader, and number 90, Jadavian Clowney. I want you to notice their hands here. All right, so they're going to get both their hands up, and Brady has to basically throw this absolutely perfectly if he wants any chance of completion. Do you see that? Let me try to pause right at that frame. All right, you see this? Right? He has to get that right by 
uh, 98 DJ Reader's hand. So watch where this throw actually ends up on Michael Floyd, right? That's a catch. All right. His elbows are still slightly bent. That should be a catch right there. This one isn't Brady's fault at all. Um, so the last pick, all right? This is in the same game, Texans game. The last pick, Brady gets absolutely destroyed, okay? Last pick, Brady got played. This is 100% Tom Brady's fault right here. All right, so let's go straight to that. So we're going to start off right over here. It's going to be um, a sort of cover one man. This is something that the Texans ran all game. This did give Tom Brady fits, mainly because man-to-man -man coverage, you know, his receivers were struggling with that. Brady had to play absolutely perfect. Okay. So this is just straight up man coverage. All right. You're going to get 24 Jonathan Joseph on Michael Floyd and 25 on Dola. You're going to get AJ Boye on Edelman. You're going to get... 43 on Bennett you're going to get Cushing Brian Cushing on Blunt all right and you're gonna get Merciless who's probably the biggest part of this play on the edge right here all right and so uh, number 55 uh, Gerard McKinney or Bernard or uh, Bernardrick McKinney rather he's just gonna sit down and play right here underneath to stop any potential crossing routes okay so what's gonna happen here is this is a play action. So what's going to happen is the guard right here, number 69, Shaq Mason, he's actually going to pull out. All right. He's going to pull. He's going to try to block. It. Ben is going to try to help create the seam. So this is a play action for Blunt, and this is meant to try to suck in Brian Cushing right there to essentially take him out of the play. All right. So let's get over the routes real quick. We're going to see um, Edelman on a sort of post like that all right he's gonna run a post we're gonna see michael floyd run an in route okay we're gonna see amandola run a uh, seam route okay and so blunt past this since he's past the line of scrimmage he can't really block here he's basically out of play so what's gonna happen is um Amendola is there to basically suck up the single high safety, right? So with Amendola running a seam, you expect the safety to sort of take that kind of angle and sort of go with Amendola just because he's going downfield. So what that's going to do is it's going to create a high low on that single high safety. So what's going to happen is that the single high safety is going to be forced to choose between either covering Edelman or Amendola, right? Edelman's running the, the post underneath. So... Brian Cushing is basically eliminated from the play, right? Because he's going to step in. He's going to be eliminated here. But Brady seems to forget about Bernardrick McKinney, who's sitting right in the middle of the field, right underneath Edelman's post route. All right? He just doesn't see him. I don't I don't know what happened with Brady. But Brady basically got played here, okay? Um, so we have uh, Andre Hall, the safety, right? And he's, he's obviously just going to step back a bit. Right, because he sees the seam coming from Amendola. And this is a basically an easy, easy, easy play for uh, Bernard McKinney right in the middle. He's in perfect position. He can't make the play on the ball, but he tips it up enough to where it's a pick. So let's check this play out. All right. All right, so first thing. First thing you notice. First of all, um, at first glance, you might think Michael Floyd's open, but... uh. Uh, who is this? Jonathan Joseph has a wonderful angle on the ball. That's a pick if Brady throws it there. Wonderful, wonderful angle. And you can see, um, it looks like Brady's actually looking right at Edelman. Right? You can see his field of vision looks right at Edelman. So, this is basically just an easy read for Bernard McKinney. You just stab, stay right underneath. Alright? Again, phenomenal angle taken up top by, uh, by Jonathan Joseph. So, let's keep going with this. There's one incredibly important part that I'm going to mention in just a second. Alright, it's just an easy tip and pitch, or tip and catch. Alright, so what's the important part here? If you pay attention to the uh, line of scrimmage right here on the edge, 
you're going to see that because we have the guard pulling like that, there's going to be a giant sort of void in the line, right? So you have the line, you have the line like this, and you have the line like that. There's just going to be this giant hole right here. And so uh, Marcus Cannon, who had been manhandling, and I mean manhandling, Whitney Merciless all game, okay? He's going to have to cover basically both sides of the line here. And so basically what's going on is he's forced to step back. And he's trying not to give the edge to Whitney Merciless. And Whitney Merciless is one of the game's premier pass rushers. Because he knows this, right? So he's going to step out. He's going to spin back in. And just that spin move is enough to put enough pressure on Brady to where he has to get the ball out right away. Because he knows he's going to take a sack. And Whitney Merciless has been on Brady all game, right? So, let's check out how this play goes. Previous play. Again, you see that spin move? Just that's enough to get pressure on Brady, okay? And, again, I didn't really like the play design. I'm not a huge fan of LeGarrette Blunt, like, to be honest, because he's such a situational back, you know? You're, he's really only good at the goal line. Um, I, I like a lot of our other versatile backs. You got James White, Dion Lewis breaking ankles, you know? Those, those are the sort of backs that I like to see a little more. Um, even with the power back, now now we have Mike, uh, Mike Gillisley going into this season, who I'm actually looking forward to. He's going to be he's gonna be a little more versatile than LeGarrette Blunt. But running play actions with Blunt is really, really risky because you really have to sell it here. Um, so, basically, um, yeah, um, this is basically Cannon's fault as well for not being able to seal, but you can't really blame him too much. This is, a, this is something that the scheme basically set up for Brady, where there's a giant hole in the line of scrimmage. It's, you know, it's Whitney Merciless. It's not some crappy pass rusher. He is a good pass rusher. So, yeah, Brady just got straight up finessed here. And, uh, yeah, so that's it for the uh, interception analysis for Tom Brady. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. In total, um, this is basically the only interception this year that came off of edge pressure. So, um, in case you were keeping count, I'd say about two out of four of Brady's interceptions were actually his fault. And those ones are the Seahawks game and this interception right here. All right, I guess you could say the Ravens one was about half his fault just because he threw it up. He was expecting a penalty, right? I guess that's a bad decision. Hindsight's always twenty twenty, But in the spur of the moment... It would have been a penalty. He got away. Uh, Sharice Wright did get away with one. So, two out of four of Brady's interceptions were his fault. So that begs the question, how do you stop Tom Brady? Well, again, what's the theme? Pressure, right? And not just any kind of pressure. It's pressure down the middle. You'll notice that this entire game, uh, this is actually a rare play where you see Whitney Merciless on the edge against Marcus Cannon because, as I said before, Marcus Cannon was manhandling him. But you're going to see Whitney Merciless... He, he was often playing on top of the center, David Andrews. He just blitz. Play would be over in like two, three seconds, or two seconds flat because he'd be there all of a sudden. He'd be right on the in the middle. And the reason for that is Brady's pocket passer. He's probably as much of a stock pocket passer as they come. All right, so Brady in the pocket, you flush him on the edge, he'll just move to the other side of the pocket. He's very, very fluid. His line will be able to sort of bring the guy around like that, and Brady can just step up in the pocket. But when you have pressure down the middle with Brady, right, where is he going to go? He can't scramble. He's not athletically gifted enough to be able to scramble out and make a play like Aaron Rodgers might. So that's the key to beating Tom Brady. And you'll notice that uh, two, two of his uh, four interceptions, right, the Ravens one and the Seahawks one, both came with some serious pressure down the middle. And this one comes from pressure on the edge, right? So, basically, the way you beat Tom Brady is pressure down the middle, okay, and man coverage, because that takes some time for his receivers to be open, and Tom Brady's got to make an absolutely fantastic throw to, an, to the receiver to be able to, you know, complete the pass. So, before we finish, let's just uh, take a look at the play from a different view. All right. Alright. 
So again, Julian Edelman, pretty good tackle, but you're going to see that spin move, and he just doesn't see it coming underneath. Now, Julian Edelman ran a bit more of a um, shallower route, right? Maybe if Brady audibled it into a shallower, a shallower route. I don't know if Brady was expecting uh, McKinney to actually be the one covering um, Blunt man-to-man. -man. Um, because in that case, McKinney would have been sucked in like that. And then at that point, Edelman might have been open like right over here. That's probably what happened there. But that doesn't happen. Brady didn't have the awareness to be able to get rid of the ball. Um, or to throw an accurate pass, rather. And to acknowledge that McKinney was there. And that's basically because of that pressure. So, um, yeah, that's our first episode. Hope you enjoyed. Uh, if you enjoyed the content, please leave a like, comment, and or subscribe. This is our first video, so any constructive criticism would be greatly appreciated. Alright, thanks for watching. This is Blue Nine Productions.